Okay, so it looks like we're gonna have to make a fourth part and we're gonna end it off on this one Let's read in Amos chapter 9 verse 9 For I will give the command And I will shake the people of Yasharal among all the nations as grain is shaken in a sieve and not a pebble will reach the ground All the sinners among my people will die by the sword all those who say disaster will not overtake or meet us so like I have been saying in my videos you know throughout the week and throughout the years through the spirit of Yahweh there's gonna come a time and like I said I don't know when only Yahweh knows but people are gonna be getting you know punished by Yahweh he's gonna use these other nations however he's gonna use them to punish his people this is what's gonna happen and when I say his people I'm talking about those who are not right with Yahweh those who are still worshiping idols those who are defiling his name only those who honor Yahweh will be saved that is the whole point of this you can think otherwise you know you can worship another name if you want so go ahead try it but when things start to happen call on that name Let's see if that name is going to save you because this is the most important thing of your spiritual journey is to understand the name because everything, right? Everything that you will be doing will be going to the name that you're calling on. And if you're not calling on the right name, best believe that everything that you have been doing will be for nothing. You could think otherwise, but that's the reason why a day is going to come and you're going to see it. And it's never to scare anybody. You know, it's just to warn you. Through the spirit of Yahweh. So we got to go back to the scripture and read it again. It says, For I will give the command and I will shake the people of Yashara among all the nations as grain is shaken in a sieve and not a pebble will reach the ground. So the Most High is going to be testing his people. That's a precept to the scripture where it says, Yahweh will search Yahweh Washlam with lamps and he will punish all of those who are complacent now for those that humble themselves down this is why it says this in Isaiah 44 and 3 for I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants which is happening now the Most High Yahweh you know he's giving dreams to his people I was one that used to say in my videos and I used to also believe that dreams are not to be you know taken too seriously but the most tell you how would change you know my way of looking at that recently he is pouring out his spirit on his people he's giving people dreams so dreams are a vision during dreams Yahweh gives his people they are warnings and so a lot of his people in these times and in these days they will be receiving dreams you know deep dreams because this is what Yahweh was doing he's getting his people ready okay he is getting his people ready before the judgment comes remember Yahweh gives the warning before the judgment that's why it says that he called but you did not answer so Yahweh will show people things all these people out there that want to continue to be in hate groups all these people that want to continue to call on other names and not Yahweh, a day is in store for you. The only name that will save you is Yahweh. Deuteronomy 11 and 18. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. So again, the people who are worshiping idols, the people who are into religions the people who have been indoctrinated they have the mark of the beast tied around their right hands and their foreheads you see that you see how religion is the mark of the beast right because they are getting brainwashed you know the words of another man is being remembered in their heads not the words of Yahweh. their strength right because you got to remember the reason why Yahweh says to tie them as symbols on your hands is so that we may understand that our strength comes from Yahweh. 
So that is the reason why it says to tie them as symbols on your hands, okay? Exodus 13 and 9. This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand. You see that, right? Read that carefully. This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead that this law of Yahweh is to be on your lips. For Yahweh brought you out of Egypt with his mighty hand. Exodus 13 and 16. And it will be like a sign on your hand and a symbol on your forehead that Yahweh brought us out of Egypt with his mighty hand. Ezekiel 9 and 4. Go throughout the city of Yarrow and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. And who are these people? They are the ones who see their God. They are the ones who have bind Yahweh's words on their hands and foreheads. Okay? Isaiah chapter 62 verse 3. You will be a crown of splendor in Yahweh's hand. What hand? That same hand that took us out of Egypt. A royal diadem in the hand of your power, Yahweh. This is why, you know, I bring this scripture up in Proverbs 27 and 23. Be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Give careful attention to your herds. Here's the key verse. For riches do not endure forever, and a crown is not secure for all generations. You see that? So that's why you have to check yourself, because you have to always remember your hour. You got to remember your crown, okay? Remember that seal. So, you know, your hour says that he's going to punish the people who have forgotten about him, you know? Why? Because that crown is not secure. That crown fell off. But generally speaking, this is pretty much how it can be with anybody, with any one of us. Okay? That's why you got to check yourself. You got to always remember that riches do not endure forever. And a crown is not secure for all generations. So your money, it can go away. And just like this knowledge that the Most High Yahweh was giving you, it can fade away. So that's why you got to constantly meditate on the scriptures and things like that. Hosea chapter 13, verse 9. It says, You are destroyed, Yasharel, because you are against me, against your helper. Furthermore, it says, Where is your king that he may save you? Where are your rulers in all your towns of whom you said, Give me a king and princess? Because this is pretty much what happened, you know. This is the reason why the Most High Yahweh told Samuel to anoint Saul. Because the people wanted a king. They needed a, a king to see with their eyes. They weren't pleased enough with Yahweh. Alright, that's why it says here. So in my anger I gave you a king. And in my wrath I took him away. Because why? Again, you know, it did not please Yahweh that the people, you know, weren't pleased with Yahweh being their king. So in his anger, he gave you King Saul. And he also took them away. From King Saul to King Solomon. You know, and down the line. And here we are today. Okay? With our king. With our ruler. But we have Yahweh, who is our God. Our ruler. Our judge. Our everything. Like the scripture says. And let's close it off on this scripture here. Isaiah 33 and 22. For Yahweh is our judge, Yahweh is our lawgiver, Yahweh is our king. It is he, it is Yahweh, who will save us. No other ruler, no other king, no other prophet that is supposed to disappear out of nowhere, no. And sure as hell, not no damn Jeebus Geist. So, this is why we must put our trust in Yahweh, because our hope, our strength, comes from Yahweh. And with that, peace, blessings, and love to you and your families. Praise Yahweh.